Hi everybody, welcome to my new series on perfection and homemaking. Today we're going to topic, tackle the topic of cleaning. And I want you to think before we start talking about your favorite homes, the homes that you've actually been in, not the homes on blogs or the homes on Pinterest or the homes that you see um, in magazines. I want you to think of the homes that you've been in, your, your parents' home, your grandmother's home, friends' homes, parishioners' homes. Think of those homes where you feel the most comfortable and the most uh, warm and, and like it's a friendly environment. For me, a lot of the homes that I feel the happiest in were not homes that were pristine or perfectly organized or perfectly clean. They were homes where people really lived and where people had collected interesting items and where uh, I could smell different um, scents from their cooking and their, their cleaning and their, the incense in their icon corners and I could touch the wonderful fabrics that they had for their furnishings and I could see the lovely things that they had um, collected for their walls and for their um, other decorative items. And these are the homes that are the ones that loom large in my memory as ones that I want to emulate and ones that I want to to have my home be like. I'd love for people to come to my home and feel that it is welcoming and that it is comfortable. Um, and so I think that that is what I'm mostly hoping that you will get from the videos that I'm sharing. Not that things need to be perfect for them to be wonderful or for them to be exactly what um, what you would see in a magazine, but that they are perfect for the family that lives there and perfect for the people that are, are ministered to in a home, um, either through uh, dinner parties or through play dates or through just spending a little time over a cup of tea. Um, so with that in mind, I want to just also mention that in this video, I am not planning on giving you a detailed cleaning schedule for for use in your home. And the reason that I'm not going to do that is because there are lots of um, cleaning schedules that you can find on the internet. There are also lots of homemaking reference books that you can use that um, have cleaning schedules in them. And honestly, those cleaning schedules probably are better than what I could come up with for you. Two books that I have that have cleaning schedules in them that I really like um, and other reference type things for your home are Cheryl Mendelson's Home Comforts, which is a great book to have, and also Martha Stewart's Homemaking, Homekeeping Handbook. And both of these books are pretty widely available. I think you can probably get them at any bookstore and they're also most likely in your library. So if you have any interest in them, check those out. Um, Again, you can also Google cleaning schedules and find great um, examples of them. But for this video, I really want to focus on giving advice and helping people that are completely exhausted by the things that are happening in their lives and those people that feel that they have no time for cleaning or for homemaking and feel discouraged by that. Um, so. What I think my, my number one suggestion is to people that, are, that are, feel that they have no time for, for cleaning um, is to really think about what your expectations are when it comes to cleaning and um, think about how you um, can possibly eliminate most of the things that are dragging you down and just keep the things that are the most necessary. For me, when I um, sit down and I start to think about the things that I have to clean in our house, I get enormously overwhelmed and I feel like I can't possibly get it all accomplished in a week. Or I feel very, as I'm writing things down, very excited and ready to, to get going, you know, usually on a Sunday night when I'm jotting down what I want to accomplish during the week. And then as the week progresses, I you know, quickly start to feel despair because I can't get it all done or I don't have the energy or the, or even the time because there are so many other things that are, um, that have come up during the week. And then I just, at, you know, by the time Friday rolls around and I've accomplished nothing, I feel like a giant failure. 
So my suggestion to you, if this is happening to you, if you're planning for a lot of cleaning during your week and you're finding that you're just not getting it done for whatever reason, I advise you to cut your routine, your schedule, your cleaning schedule in half or by two thirds. And really, I'm telling you that I do not think any house needs more on a weekly basis than to have the bathroom cleaned or bathrooms cleaned and the kitchen cleaned. If you cannot get to anything else in your house, if you can only clean the bathrooms and you can only clean the kitchen, then you are fine. And I know that that sounds completely crazy. I know that, you know, for example, my husband's grandmother was an amazing homemaker. She kept everything pristine in her house and she's 95 years old and still her house looks immaculate. And I know that that is the goal. The goal is if you're a homemaker to have a very clean house. The reality is, however, that there are a lot of things claiming our attention these days. Some of us are homeschooling. Some of us are caring for elderly relatives. Some of us are trying to attend more services during Lent. Some of us have a lot of volunteering opportunities that we need to, to take care of. Some of us are working from home or working outside of the home. And we just simply do not have enough time to take care of the cleaning tasks that um, come up. And so for you, I say, cut that cleaning list in half or by two thirds and just do the bathroom and just do the kitchen. And the reason that I say that is because if you can only clean those two rooms and then you are also able to maintain the rest of your house, then you will have a perfectly reasonably clean home that will be ready to receive any guests that unexpectedly pop over or ready to handle any activity that you want to, to do because you have cleaned the most important things in your house and you are also spending time maintaining. And when I say maintaining, what I mean is you are tidying things up as you go along several times a day and uh, you are helping to ensure that your children learn how to do those things. So let's say it is the morning and everybody has just woken up. Before you feed people breakfast, to start to teach them to make their beds, pick up their clothing that they've changed out of and put it in the hamper, put away their toys and their books that they've come out, that have come out before bedtime. If they all tidy up their room, this will take five minutes per day, and then everyone can sit down to breakfast with their rooms already clean and ready to go. The same thing can happen at lunchtime. As mama is preparing lunch, ask the children to run through and put away any books, papers, coats, shoes, toys, anything that has come out in the morning time, have it all be swept away and put, put back in its place before lunchtime happens. Of course, if you have small children, you're going to have to do this with them. But I am here to tell you that if you do this and you do it every day with your children, by the time your children are three and four years old, five years old, they will be able to do this by themselves and you will not have to do it anymore. Um, the same thing should happen at dinner time. Before dinner happens, before, your, before dad gets home, before everyone sits down to a nice meal, everybody should t quickly run through the house, tidy up the things that were taken out during the, the time between lunch and dinner, put them away, and then after dinner when it's time to get into the, the evening routine of baths and prayers and books to be read and things like that, you don't have to worry about tidying your house. And then after bedtime, mom and dad can sit down and relax and have a break and not have to stare at 50,000 Legos strewn all over the living room floor and feel like they cannot relax until those things are picked up. So that is what I mean by maintaining. It sounds like it's a lot. It sounds like, oh my gosh, are you telling me that I have to three times a day pick up my house? What are you, crazy, Emily? No, what I'm telling you is if you're picking up your house three times a day, each of those times takes five minutes. If you don't pick up your house three times a day or twice a day, then by the end of the day, it's a disaster. It's a mega, mega mess. You have clothes that are strewn everywhere. You have toys strewn everywhere. There are books in every uh, crevice of the house and piled on the table. Shoes are by the door. There's coats, 
you know, not hung up. Backpacks are open everywhere. But if you can, can say to your children, this is what we're doing. We are cleaning up every morning and making sure our rooms are tidy. Every day before lunch, we're making sure that our home is tidy. Every day before dinner, we're making sure our home is tidy. It's a constant thing that's happening. It's con we're constantly keeping our life tidy and organized so that things never get out of hand. The second place where this has to happen, and maybe even more important than the rest of the house, is the kitchen. There has to be constant maintaining in the kitchen in order for things to go well. I, I feel that it is much easier to clean up dishes, to wipe the counter, to um, mop up any spills that happened on the stove, to give the floor a sweep, to take out any garbage that needs to go if you do it immediately after a meal. If you wait, then things get crusted on and hard. It takes longer to clean them up. It's not as easy to get back into the kitchen after uh, you know several hours has el elapsed. When you have another meal to prepare and the previous meal's mess is there, it's very disheartening. And I have found that if I can maintain my kitchen by taking care of dishes right away, cleaning the counters, wiping up the stove, and keeping up with the, the floors and the, the trash and recycling, things go a lot smoother and things look a lot tidier throughout the day. So to recap, you are eliminating the extra cleaning from your routine and just taking care of the kitchen and the bathrooms. You're maintaining your home's tidiness in the, the whole house with toys and books and clothing and beds. And you're also staying on top of the cleaning in the kitchen so that when you're cooking meals, when you are coming in after a long day, you're not overwhelmed by the mess that is left from previous meals or from homeschooling in the morning when the, you know, the papers are still out at seven o'clock at night. Um, another thing that I really want to um, suggest is that simplicity is best. If you can keep a handle on the, the things that you own, on your books, on your uh, toys, on your clothing, on your tchotchkes, on your papers, on your catalogs, on your magazines, then things will be much easier to maintain. If you have a giant stack of newspapers that you haven't gotten to read yet, get rid of it. It's not going to ever get read. If you have bags of clothing that some well-meaning person has given to you, go through them quickly. Take out the things that you want. The rest of them pop right into your car. If you have uh, too many things to dust on your piano, if you have too many pictures and too many little knickknacks, go through them, find the favorite things that you have, and get rid of the rest. Simpler is better because the less you have, the less you have to maintain. These are just a couple of my small tips that I hope will um, help spark a conversation. I would love to hear about your cleaning routine, what you have found has worked. I would love to hear about how you maintain your home. I would love to hear about your favorite homes where you feel the most um, uh, warmth and the most friendliness when you go. I have a lot of homes in my life that I have visited where I have just been madly in love with how the, the families maintain them. And I will be perfectly honest with you, they all are not pristine. Every single house that I admire the most is lived in. And you can tell that a family lives there. But it's the way that they are, um, where, the way they style things, the way they maintain things, the way they, um, they are in their home that makes it special. So I would love to hear about those special homes in your life. I would love to hear about your cleaning routines and maintenance routines. I would love to hear your questions. I am planning on having the second video in this series. If we need to have a second homemaking or a cleaning video, then I am happy to, to do that next week if there are a lot of questions or comments or more clarification needed. Otherwise, we will continue right along in our little series and move on to cooking. I hope that you have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.